Can't decide in torn between a romantic, comedy, action, or an indie film to watch for the weekend? Well, well, well. Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast is your ultimate guide to the latest movies. Join us as we dissect the latest on the blockbusters. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Movies Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Heidi, and with me today is the lovely Ariane. Hello, everyone. And today, we are talking about Netflix movies, specifically Netflix originals. And we'll be starting off our episode talking about Oscar-winning Netflix originals, and Mm -hmm. then we're going to be ending with the ever-so-popular Netflix original to all the boys I've loved before. So I love Netflix. Netflix is amazing. The convenience, oh, the yeah. quality content, mm-hmm. everything about it. Yeah. I am super excited that we're looking specifically at Netflix originals because yeah. I think that's like probably the future of where movie making and everything right. and production is going to go. Right. Because people are so busy. They mm-hmm. don't want to sit there and schedule their time around a, a show that's, you know, time slot is five to six. And right. just like, oh, I'm still at work. But right. then they came out with the DVR and all this stuff. Right. Uh, really, everything's just getting more and more convenient over time. Oh, yeah. Except yeah. I, don't, I don't like how they show the whole season because I don't know how to pace myself. So I'll <laughs> binge watch a whole show. That is the beauty of streaming. I know. <laughs> Well, sometimes you can get some services that'll show you just a few at a time. Yeah. But, you know, mostly it's a lot of I'm binging. Like, no, I need to find out what happens. Yeah. So I'm going to watch oh, the yeah, next for episode. Sure. <laughs> for sure. I mean, yeah, that's that's my preferred uh, evening plan. Right. <laughs> um, so the first uh, movie we're talking about, the two Oscar winning movies from, from Netflix are both documentaries. And the first one is the 2016 film, The White Helmets. And this was directed by Orlando Von Insedel. Inced- yeah, that's what I want to no. say. Yeah. Um, and this is, uh, it won for Best Documentary Short Subject. And that was at the Academy Awards and I believe, 2017. This is such a good this film. Is oh, so my gosh. This good. I completely understand why it won. Oh, yeah, me too. For sure. Me um, too. So, again, this is a short f- documentary. It's like 40 minutes. Yeah, it's not So, it's that not long. a full length. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So, you should really watch it. Mm-hmm. It's not very long, but it is very impactful. Right. Most very shorts impactful. are under, I want to say, 50 minutes even. They don't yeah. even go all the way up to an hour or yeah. anything like that. I was surprised by how short it was. Right. Um, and so, this film is um, about Syria, and as the airstrikes are just Uh, bombs and things are being dropped on civilian targets there is a group of first responders Mm -hmm. and um in the film the title the white helmets uh, is the name of their group but they are officially called uh the syria defense force volunteers right um aka the white helmets right because they wear white helmets yes exactly exactly so they wear white helmets Mm -hmm. and they have like a light on it and everything yeah so it helps them to be identified and to protect themselves right and um they work the group that is followed in this film works in aleppo and across syria Mm -hmm. and um it also follows them as they do training in turkey as well and i think that's you were saying it's like it's a month long yeah it was a month long training from what they were saying and oh my gosh i felt so bad because the seriousness of the bombings that were going on and then for them to just have to leave like their families for this month-long training i mean i can only imagine the stress on them to be in a safe place while their family is still in syria you know uh, it was yeah it was sad it was yeah i i it really pulled at all my heartstrings. Right. For sure. And I was surprised, but for how short it was, it was so impactful. Oh, it was. There was and like no wasted time. Right. And they just gave you so much information. Mm-hmm. Just, I think it was mostly with the visual, yes. too, because it's like they didn't speak a lot and it was subtitles, mm-hmm. so they were speaking their language. Mm-hmm. But even just watching it, you're just like, 
oh my gosh you're gonna cry at any right. moment i'm yeah. not really a oh, big for sure. crier but i'm just like i would though yeah I cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no and, and i think anyone who watches it will be impacted and specifically the director was extremely impacted by the work of the mm-hmm. white helmets because he was inspired to make the documentary when he saw footage of them um rescuing uh, a baby from that was trapped under rubble and yeah. you actually see that scene in the movie right that inspired the director and it's mm-hmm. It's amazing. Oh right. My God. The baby was, uh, they said, one week old. Yes. And they found oh the baby gosh. alive yeah. and um, still alive today. Right. And so the, the director, Orlando, when he saw this video, he became really inspired by the group and he went to go find them and he asked if he could join them when they were on their training in Turkey. Mm-hmm. And that's when he uh, he films their training. That's that part of the movie. Right. And then um, while there, he asked one of the members, uh, Khalid Kat- Kateb, Kat- mm-hmm. Kateb who's a member of the White Helmets, and he asked him if he would volunteer to uh, document their work on video camera because he had kind of been doing that informally um, earlier. Right. And he became the videographer slash cinematographer for all the other shots when they were in Syria. Mm -hmm. And um, when, unfortunately, actually when this film went to the Oscars, unfortunately, um, Khalid couldn't go to the Oscars because of the travel ban that was put in place at the time. Um, So even though, so he couldn't be there in person when they won. It's so sad. The film just has so many parts about it that are really relevant. Oh yeah, they are. And definitely, I feel like everyone should watch it. I mean, because also like it relates to like the travel ban that was going on. That's why he Mm -hmm. couldn't come. Exactly. You know, and about a film that is like speaking to try like to really i feel like motivate people to help uh syrians yeah and to really see what's going on exactly you know? yeah because i hadn't after watching this um but i mean excuse me before watching this mm-hmm. i had no idea it was as um as bad as it was mm-hmm. i was just like okay you know another rough country you know people want to come to a better place kind of thing mm-hmm. and then watching this i was like oh my gosh i would have been gone like, yeah. oh, oh my, yeah. especially with like having kids and they're just like, we have no way. It's like, you do what you can to get out and then you come to America and you're just like, oh, you can't be here. That hurt. Right. And then you get so like, bad. right. And then you get kicked out. Yeah. Or get or kicked out of other can't country. Even come here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my God. gosh. It I was know. so hard to watch. Yeah. And, and I think the hardest thing, and this is just a thing about documentaries, is that it's so hard to watch and it's reality. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's what's going yeah. on right now. Well, and that's why it, it's hard to yeah, watch. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it, you like watch all these people and you like, you love them and then mm-hmm. they're they're real people who yeah. are really going through this every exactly. day and Ugh. it just like wakes you up to really what other people are going through you mm-hmm. know you can have as much hate in your heart as you want if you want to be like oh no forget them they're mm-hmm. just but then you watch something that's like they are really going through the most right now like people are dropping bombs and people are dying and right. they're just trying to save their families because me being a mom i would do anything to just make yeah. sure my kids are okay like even if i had to just send them you you guys just go as long mm-hmm. as you know you can make a way but it's just so hard yeah. because it's like oh, i can only imagine what them and their families are going through yeah the yeah right just the constant stress yeah and there's so many beautiful things in this movie too like despite yeah um the struggles is just like the camaraderie that all the white helmets have together like this group of men who's trying so hard to help their Mm -hmm. town and who when they speak about like someone that they're saving and like this this is my brother or this is my child exactly you know it's so it was really beautiful right they connect like on a family level and it's it's interesting too because even the white helmets the guys Mm -hmm. who are being rescued they all refer to each other as like brother and Mm -hmm. i don't know if it's like a religious thing or if Mm -hmm. they really like no this is is, you know how their culture is and i thought it was mm-hmm. amazing another thing i was telling heidi earlier is i thought it was so cool how the uh, men how much affection they showed yes. each other and you know people that they were pulling out kids like they just wanted to make sure everybody was safe right yeah i completely agree i feel like this is like it's like kind of corny to say but this is a situation where i really felt it of like all of their actions right. were driven by love oh yeah for sure oh yeah you know and i and I, like I, I totally agree i know we were talking about this earlier mm. but um also just like the affection they had and that they just weren't ashamed of how close they were exactly you know and like hugging each other and trying right. to reassure each other and comfort each other yeah you know oh, it was yeah. it was amazing right this, oh ugh. my favorite scene especially when you were saying um comfort each other and mm-hmm. hug each other so um there was a part in there where one dude was waiting to get 
um, news about his brother because yes. he was gone in training for a month mm -hmm. and he found in the news that his brother could have possibly been in um, one of the bombs mm -hmm. and might not have made it. Mm -hmm. And the one who was watching from a distance, one of his um, teammates, I guess, yeah, or fellow volunteers, exactly, yeah. was like, I wish he would just cry it out. Because yes. he was holding it in. And I was like, right. And he was like, because the same thing happened to me. And he just needs to cry. Yeah. And I was like, right. You guys, it's okay to cry, fellas. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I know. And that was so hard because they all, they almost talked about it so matter of factly because yeah. it had like happened to all of them. Right. Yeah. Right. And they it, all experienced yeah. the loss. They all had been through that. Yeah. And just like them saying like yeah like my two-year-old child when a plane yeah. goes by well knows the word bomb right you know oh, and I we'll know. say like is that, that a bomb so dad and oh. it was just so sad it really was it yeah. really was oh my gosh this is such a good film though right it's so such good. a good film um i would definitely say you should definitely watch it it's only 40 minutes yeah um it it, it's honestly for me like it's both motivating but then at the same time like heartbreaking right. and like debilitating because it's like well, how do how do you fix something right that is just so wrong that mm -hmm. is going on exactly you know? exactly and yeah. definitely a perspective too because mm -hmm. as much as you want to be like oh they can help themselves they can do this they can right. go anywhere else all these refugees like, coming yeah, in and taking like, resources yeah yeah right as much oh. as yeah as much as you want to say that when you really see this film and see what people are mm -hmm. trying to leave from yeah oh you know, yeah Oh it's, yeah, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it really is. Um, also, another news related to this: um, in December of uh, 2016, George Clooney announced that he was in the early stages of developing a feature-length film based on the documentary. Oh, okay. So I don't think his film would be a documentary. I think it would be Just more a, fiction, but right. based off of what's going on and right. um, some of the documentary things they talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I think that would be a great film. Definitely right. something that would be very moving. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, so um, we wish George Clooney the best in that, and I'll be excited to see it. Oh, yeah, and, me um, too. Yeah, you guys should definitely go see Bring this. Bring a box of dishes. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, hunker, hunker down, sit on your couch, yeah. wrap yourself in a blanket, yeah. get some tissues, you know, right. some hot tea or cocoa or something, right. and something, just kind of cry it out. Just, Don't it be does. ashamed. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> just, <laughs> just cry. Hug your neighbor. I know. <laughs> yeah. um, so the next film we want to talk about um, is also a Netflix original Oscar winner. Um, and I just want to uh, briefly mention it before we go on break. Um, but you guys might have heard of it. It's called Icarus. Oh, my gosh. And yes. it is a 2017 documentary um, directed by Brian Fogel. Mm. And in the Academy Awards, uh, let's see, it won Best Documentary Feature Length, so not the short length. And I think it won in 2017 or right. 2018. I think it was 2018 because it was made later in 20. No, no, no. It was. It was 2017. We yeah. haven't had. Have we had Oscars yet? I uh, don't know. See, now I feel all I out know. of the loop. <laughs> I feel really out of loop for all award season. Um, but it won an Academy Award in the 90th Academy Award um, for Best Documentary Feature. Right. And we will take a break and then we will continue talking about Icarus. Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden in the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Keith keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. <laughs> Welcome back to the GSMC Movies Podcast. Um, so we recently, in before the break, we introduced, we were talking about the film Icarus, a uh, Netflix original documentary. And we just want to clarify that it won Best Documentary Feature at the 90th Academy Awards, which was in 2018, in right. March. So it won uh, this year as we are recording. And um, it is about uh, who actually, so the director of the film is Brian Fogel, and he also kind of I guess you could say stars in the film. Yeah, yeah, because he played the cycle, like the main cyclist guy. Yes, yeah. yes. So, um, yeah, and so it being a documentary, it basically chronicles um, Brian's exploration mm -hmm. of the 
sports doping mm-hmm. in he starts talking about uh cycling so yeah. like the tour de france and all of the scandal about lance armstrong mm-hmm. um being on steroids and so he wants to go investigate this and he as he's investigating it and as it chronicles him uh participating in a steroids program yeah. to go into an amateur cycling race yeah. he is introduced to uh gregory rochenko rochenko who yeah. uh is a russian chemist and so he's introduced to him to help for gregory to help brian in his Mm -hmm. steroid use essentially for this cycling race yeah um to kind of see like how the scandal happened and how someone could use steroids but still not be caught in sports right and as he's doing this it kind of ends up he gets caught up in like the story of the international doping scandal Mm -hmm. and um you kind of learn more about gregory and what he's up to well he was um just to clarify that gregory was the former head of russia's national anti-doping laboratory at the um anti-doping center in russia yes that's his official title yeah. so he's the head of the department former head yeah former he, head oh, yes oh god watch this, the oh end god. is just oh my gosh yeah so he's the former head yes of this laboratory and mm-hmm. he's the person that um brian is pointed to yeah to go to as brian is trying as taking drugs to be a part of this cycling race. yeah yeah which is also crazy that you go to the head of a laboratory uh-huh. about anti-doping right to learn how to do a doping program mm-hmm. which again if you watch this documentary yeah. you will We'll see <laughs> well it was crazy to me how he got connected with gregory in the first place yes because he got connected by a the ucla um like a guy anti-doping yeah well, specialist he, yeah yeah and he's the guy who actually designed the test to track any kind of steroids or anything in your system right and so he was like oh yeah i'm friends with this guy if that's what you're looking for I'll just give you his number. I'm not going to tell you what you'll get from him. Right. Yeah. So it was like very discreet. But when he called him, it's like he helped him with everything. Everything. Oh, my gosh. It's insane. I'll just say when you start this film, you think you're going into one thing. And it goes so much deeper. Yeah. You get everything. Yeah. And I don't think I don't think Brian even realized how you know mixed up he mm-hmm. was really getting himself into yeah like, it, yeah. it was so crazy i can't talk to my sister this she watched part of it with me and i was just like i don't even think he knows what he's getting himself yeah. into <laughs> right now like does he know and then you could see the worry on brian's face mm-hmm. because while he's talking to gregory like um they they all they show a lot of skype chats between them Mm -hmm. and it almost makes it seem like gregory doesn't understand the depth of the you know situation he's in yeah because he kind of just plays it off a lot right just like oh no it's fine he like tells brian everything yeah and like oh like so brian and gregory basically form a friendship oh yeah as they're doing this so they Mm -hmm. become friends so you can tell that brian cares about gregory and so as this whole thing continues so like brian is in the u.s and he's going to go to this amateur cycling race like on basically having done Mm -hmm. a whole steroids program yeah and this race is in europe and france right and then he's going to go meet gregory afterwards and they're kind of going to talk about like basically how brian went through the steroid program and Mm -hmm. how steroids are not i'd like you can't uh test for them right so like how he got away with it oh yeah basically oh, yeah. and this um amateur um race that he, that brian enters himself mm-hmm. in in france i heard it's worse or it's harder than the tour de france yeah brian says it's like all the most difficult parts of the tour de france they yeah. take and put it in this race yeah and that race is called the hot route route yeah it ca- t- takes like seven days yes to complete yeah and there are like scenes when they're doing it like it's raining and they're yeah. going uphill it's insane yeah it and, is. and brian is a good cyclist he had done this race previously while not on steroids exactly so they were doing it this time on steroids to kind of see how his performance was right. and just to see like could he get away with it exactly you know how do cyclists do that right so i mean or any athlete right any athlete yeah. yeah which is also you you're going into a movie about cycling and right. it really just goes to the whole international sports world right and it is insane it really is oh my gosh this one this movie blew my mind as yes, far as I just agree. you know how crazy the the government is involved in certain things and i'm not speaking specifically our government but the governments that are involved in the situation is like they really don't 
care and they oh my gosh and they are ruthless as right. i cut myself off i'm just like they are ruthless they just don't even care there was a scene that scared the mess out of me when, um, <laughs> gregory was like they have no morality they will kill you like they don't yes. care yes oh my gosh also i do feel like of the two documentaries we're talking about i would say um if you are a big fan of Russia, you may not yeah. like these documentaries. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. Like the previous one, the previous they one, when it's they talk the, about who's bombing them, yeah, it's, it's like the Russians. The Russians. It's yeah. Like, oh my gosh. And I don't feel bad saying that because that is a fact. It really is. <laughs> is the Russians are bombing Syria exactly. and Syrian civilians. And in this film, Gregory is a Russian scientist. It, yeah. And um, let me just say the scandal that goes on. Yeah. Is He's insane. like there's Snowden because he yes. was blowing the whistle on everything like he just laid it out right and he because he knew all of it because yeah. he headed the program and it yeah oh my gosh and it, it was crazy how he was so comfortable telling brian yes. all this from just making a documentary yeah. about it it's like okay you're just all nonchalant yeah i'll tell you all the business mm -hmm. and it's like wait and then when all the business gets out right then that's when all the governments are like right. oh we know the fbi comes and visits gregory right. and brian and yeah. the russians are like killing people oh my gosh yeah and also and i think in the beginning of the documentary before the whole scandal breaks even the scientist that greg or that brian is talking to at ucla he's basically saying like you can't make sure that no one breaks the system yeah you know like you can't make it 100 percent right safe so it kind of feels like people specifically the scientists yeah. not necessarily the people who are like running the politics of it but right. the scientists are all kind of saying like yes you can cheat the system oh exactly and we're all aware of this you yeah. know like lance armstrong nothing did is 100 you know yeah nothing is 100 yeah. percent. and that kind of leads brian into this story of like oh everyone says i can like can i right also i would have to say this is maybe this is like a trigger warning but it affected me i do, cannot watch like needles yeah or like shots right and um brian does steroids in this yeah. film so Inject, he injects style. into yeah. himself the steroids which i'm sure everyone who knows about steroids is like of course heidi that's how they work right. which i knew and then i watched <laughs> the film and i'm like why does it keep happening yeah it keeps happening if you, yeah if you can't watch stuff like that then just like close your eyes yes. be forewarned that they show him injecting his yes self, like. yes and it and i like the, i was watching with a friend and she had to like hold my hand because i was like why does it keep <laughs> happening they just right. keep doing it and she's like he does it every day and i'm like i know but still even <laughs> when he so changes much. from his thigh to yes, like to his butt, butt yeah <laughs> It's oh, like, my oh my gosh. god! I can't watch. And then he's uh, just slight nudity because it yeah, shows him. Yeah, it's you know, a documentary, right? Yeah. But, oh, oh my, my gosh! Yeah, uh, and I'm not good with blood, so when he's yeah. like, I'm bleeding, I'm like, oh no! Yeah, I can't yeah. watch this. Yeah, and I just keep being like, I'm so scared. Who knows when he's going to pull out the needle? Any moment. Oh, now. I know. <laughs> because he's like popping pills the whole time. Yeah, because that's he has to. Yeah, and oh yeah, that got me. But that wasn't the entire film. So it really, thankfully, it's just. <laughs> We ha we over I mean, we're if you're fearful or something like yeah. that, of course it's gonna have an effect. Yeah. <laughs> but you can you can get through it. I got through it. You can get oh, yeah, through yeah, it. Yeah, I totally got through it. Yeah. Too. No. So this movie is crazy. It There's really so is. many twists and turns. You have to see it. Right. I totally understand why it won an award. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and and then, it, the director, he still is winning awards for this. He's right. going to an award season in a few months because everyone mm -hmm. is like saying how amazing this film is, oh, and it yeah. really is. It really is. Oh yeah. And it's it's interesting to me how, you know, of course it's a documentary and it's all real. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and sometimes it kind of makes you not, you don't really feel like that's really what's going on until it starts to talk about like, oh, well, the FBI is involved and they're right. doing this. And then they like blur people's faces out yeah. and change their voices. And then the depth of um, Gregory's like concern, like he had to leave his wife and kids yeah. and oh my gosh i felt so bad for her right i was like oh my gosh like uh your yeah. husband is gone yeah now. like not dead but yeah he's no gone. like how deep the rabbit hole goes yeah. like you really don't know you it's really crazy don't. oh you should really watch it yeah again this is another film where maybe you curl up with a blanket and right. a warm beverage and just like you have to strap in for the ride yeah because it is crazy or don't have a warm beverage because i wanted to throw stuff i was like are you <laughs> Yeah, yeah. have like a pencil you can break yeah, nearby exactly but this i loved this show i, I really like documentaries mm -hmm. so yeah. um i don't know i just yeah. like learning about things and what's going on so th this was like one of my favorites oh i agree yeah we should watch more documentaries oh yeah it was great do. it was let's so do. great <laughs> okay so we're going to take another break and then we're going to be talking about our final film to all the boys i've loved before 
Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the movie podcast. We are ending our show with the super popular uh, Netflix original to all the boys I've loved before. Um, I had heard so much about this film. I didn't know what it was until like my roommates started coming up to me. My coworkers, right. my friends were texting me about it. Instagram was blowing up yeah. about it. Um, I kept seeing it, it so on cute. my Netflix um like their ads yeah that they show like before you choose your mm -hmm. show or whatever that's where i kept seeing it on yeah uh but i've never heard of it yeah <laughs> so I, i'm like oh wait what's that yeah and the only reason again the only reason i heard of it is because everyone just told me about it and mm -hmm. i had also seen the commercials but i was like that's a long title i'm not gonna yeah. read the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna remember that <laughs> on <it>, huh? yeah <laughs> boys what wait, wait. <laughs> um but it's based off of a novel by jenny han and it's directed by susan johnson It uh, is about a high school junior, Laura Jean Covey, and she writes love letters to all the boys that she falls passionately in love with, but then she hides them all away and never shows anyone, and basically like keeping all of her romances in just the fantasy realm, like just in her dreams. But then one day, these letters get out, and um, everything just becomes a horrifying reality for her oh my god so was, <laughs> wait she like actually fell in love with or just had strong feelings strong you? feelings <laughs> i mean <laughs> like, you could say she kind of falls in love with like one of them uh -huh. um like she writes them when she's also very young oh, so okay, she'll, okay. she wrote like the first one in like middle school like a camp crush oh yeah okay. and so she like wrote a letter to like this guy but you know never sent it and kept oh, yeah. it and then the last one that she writes a letter for is kind of the boy that she says she really did love, love. um but it's complicated because that's the boy that dates her sister whoa yeah so then she's like no one can ever read these yeah but then the letters get out oh no that's... yeah so the craziness that ensues um it's kind of like it really is every like young girl's like nightmare yeah <laughs> so i would say this is solidly in the genre of young adult <laughs> romance right um and i thought it was really cute I would definitely say there were so many moments where I was like, that was like such a cute little detail that they kind of put in. Mm -hmm. And Laura Jean is really cute. I also think her style is really adorable. Uh, actually, when I was looking into this, as I've said before, it's super popular. Like I found this yeah. like article that was like, I dressed in her outfits every day oh for like gosh. a month or something. Go and ahead. I was, I was like, man, people are super into this. Yeah. Um, so it stars uh, Lana Condor, who plays Laura, and then um, Noah Centineo, who plays the other like love interest, Peter. Okay. Is, and, and this is the final one? The final love interest? Yeah, like the final. Well, the brother I guess you would maybe? say not that one she kind of writes two letters that are like high school crushes oh okay and um the one is the boy who is dating her sister, sister. and then the other one is like her crush kind of also in high oh, school okay. so that's not weird yeah <laughs> so no uh noah centineo who centineo yeah yeah who plays peter is like the other letter she writes the other boy not her sister's oh okay, um, okay. boyfriend Get and i would also say uh lana condor and uh noah centineo have become huge stars because of this movie oh good it's kind of like a breakout role for them super yeah. popular so good for them um i also my friend saw this movie like four times really and she was like you have to see it um maybe i am like a cynic you know like maybe mm -hmm. i just have a cold heart but i watched <laughs> it and i was like this is cute 
but I would not watch this four times, nor no, do I uh, think yeah. it's like it's super it, it's worth the it. hype. It is definitely young adult. Um, so maybe not for me. You know, hey, obviously you're a young as a mature adult. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sh- <laughs> as a young mature adult, <laughs> right. maybe it's not for me. Um okay. I would say there was some for me at least, there were some parts that were like a little awkward, like maybe a few lines that were a little cringy uh-huh. and like a few moments that I didn't quite believe with right. the acting. There's like a scene when the sisters are kind of fighting, like chasing each other, mm-hmm. then I was like, oh, that was kinda awkward. You were <laughs> you weren't running at full speed. Like, that's kinda weird. Right. Um, um, but other than that, I would say the whole idea of it and everything is really adorable. Um, I also really enjoyed that um, the main character, Laura Jean, and her mm-hmm. sis- her family. So she has three sisters, or there are three girls in the family. Oh, okay. And um, her mother is Asian, a oh, Korean, and then her father is white. And so I just think it's like, for me, that's relatable. like really adorable, that it's like relatable. Uh-huh. And like, I really enjoyed seeing a young adult protagonist who's like a, of mixed Asian descent, right. um, which I had never seen before. And so I feel like, oh, yay, young adult, way to yeah. be like, way to right. be <laughs> exactly. modern, Cultural I guess. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're not even modern. I mean, that's just relevant, but yeah. it's not like people haven't looked like that before. Um, but I just... <laughs> I just think it was adorable that I could see someone who kind of like related to me on uh, even the small screen. I thought it was great. Um, And I just think it's cute. You know, I think teenagers would love it. Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's really adorable. So it's like a a chick flick. Would you call it a chick flick? Yeah, I would say it's a chick flick. Um, When my another roommate of mine was walking past me as I was watching this and she was like, you haven't seen this yet? (laughs) And it was like her and her boyfriend and they're like, yeah, you haven't seen it yet. It's so popular. And I'm like, everyone has seen it. Not just like, not just girls. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So it's for everybody. Yeah, it's for everyone. I think it's cute. Um, I would definitely suggest watching it if you're if you're in, looking for like a romance. I would say this is a good one. Oh, okay. um, and I would say like some of the struggles that Laura Jean faces are realistic mm-hmm. and aren't just like she doesn't end up at the end as a perfect person. Oh, I would who say is? it's yeah, exactly, who which is, is like a little more realistic. You know, yeah. like she's not a perfect person. The love interest isn't the perfect guy, right? But it's something that like she takes a leap of faith. You know, and I oh, think yeah. like oh, like that's that's right. more realistic. You know, so I mm-hmm. think that was very cute. Um, and a good way to end it. Right. So I know if you're going to write love notes and um, keep the, delete them after, don't keep them on paper <laughs> so this doesn't happen to you. Well, part cause... of the thing is that, like she writes the address on the envelope. Oh, like she's going to really mail it out. Yeah. But that's actually part of the story is that she writes the address and her sisters are like, you know, you're horrified, but a part we know that a part of you does want to send this. Yeah. Like a part of you doesn't just want to live in fantasy, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that was like... That was a good part, you know? Right. You got to live out your dreams in reality. Exactly. If you, you know? choose not to send it and you don't want it to get taken, you right. know, out. Don't, don't put it with the address, you know? Right. Yeah. You don't have to use um, fake names. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you want to do with that. Yeah. Uh, fake names are good. <laughs> right. I write things down all the time and then I just keep them to myself or like I'll put it in my notepad in my phone and then I'll be like, okay, I'll delete that. <laughs> right. Just immediately I got shred. it out. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> you got to shred it like the Banksy painting. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay oh so gosh. thank you guys so much for joining us on this netflix movies episode and um, we hope you will tune in next time you've been listening to the golden state media concepts movie podcast part of the golden state media concepts podcast network you can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com download our podcast on itunes stitcher soundcloud and google play just type in gsmc to find all the shows from the golden state media concepts podcast network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program